All right, everybody, I'm going to be making a video on how to replace the variable valve timing and lift electronic control, oil control valve, solenoid, and oil pressure switch. Uh, 2009 to 2013 Honda Fit. Symptoms for this is it sounds like you're grinding the starter when the car starts, and I'll, uh, I never could get it to repeat for me, but I'll try to find a video and a link to it in my description so that you can hear what it sounds like. But it sounds like you're eating the starter. Um, but it's just this little guy right here. You can see a wire coming off the top, that little like round cap. And this is the new guy here. Got it from Rock Auto. Uh, what my belief is is this screen back here and everything kind of just clogs up. And it's like a little uh, piston solenoid that moves in there. And when the oil's really, really cold, it only happens to me when the oil is cold on a cold morning, you get that grinding noise. Uh, unfortunately, being springtime, I'm probably not going to hear it again until next winter to verify that my fix um, actually worked. But, uh, but that's what I'm going with. So I'll, uh, it doesn't look like it's too difficult. There is three total steps in the workshop manual for it. So no, don't expect it to be too bad. I'm going to uh, disconnect the battery here just because I'm dealing with electrical stuff. And I'm supposed to remove the air filter housing right there, but I think I'm going to try to not do that. One thing I will say before you disconnect the negative of your battery terminal, make sure you've got the codes for the radio uh, and whatever, if you have a navigation system in there to do that also, because you will need to type the code in, anti-theft code. So make sure you have that handy before you disconnect the battery and figure out that you don't and you're stuck without a radio. All right, so the battery's disconnected. Next thing to do is remove this wiring harness here. Uh, to move that out of the way. There is a little guide clip or whatever you want to call it, a little hook that this wiring harness attaches to um, down here, right here, right behind the dipstick. You can't really see it too well. Um, so it just slides out of there, it doesn't really do anything. You don't have to undo that bolt, but just ensure that you, you notice that. Also, this hose right here, there's a little clip on the wiring harness that that hose clips into, so make sure you observe that. If you look here, see the little clip there on the, on the plug, that little clip? So you got to squeeze the female end of that that's on the car to the harness to release that thing. And of course, it's not very easy. All right, same deal with that one. You got a little clip here that you just squeeze in the top. It moves that little arm out of the way. So the top one's out. Sorry for all the external noise. It's a beautiful day here today, finally. I got the garage door open. I'm gonna use a pair of needle nose to try and collapse that clip. Alright, that's what it took. So I got both clips off now. And uh, hopefully it's just those three nuts. 10 millimeter they look like. There's also a 10 millimeter for that wiring harness to remove. And uh, looks like a one for one swap. There's one bolt, no washers or anything, so that's nice. This does see oil pressure, so I do expect a little bit of oil potentially to uh, come out of the top of it because I believe this is also the oil pressure switch to let you know if you have low oil pressure or not. All right, so that's all three bolts. Again, the orientation is like this. And it just pops right off. Not a lot to it. Let's see what it looks like. Yep, definitely will. You'll make a little bit of a. You're going to make a little bit of a mess. 
All right, well, looking at these two, it's hard to say that there's anything that looks like there's wrong with it. Um, so, I don't know. But uh, we'll get this guy back in. Maybe I expected that screen to be a little gummed up, but it's not. So, anyway, we'll get it back in, and uh, and there you go. Not too, not, again, not too difficult. All right, so to sneak this in there, I kind of went under this wiring harness and kind of just put it in underneath. It's a little bit painful, but not not too too bad so now I'll just uh, put the bolts in I did wet the gasket with a little bit of oil like you would on an oil filter change um, doesn't say to do that but can't hurt I figure so now I'll just get it positioned and uh, tighten her down All right, got the top one started. Um, so it'll be crooked, right? Obviously, I didn't notice any blue Loctite. Sometimes you'll see little dots of blue Loctite on these bolts, uh, like on the threads. I don't notice that anywhere here, so um, I'm not worried about that. One thing I would note: I should have taken a picture of it. The uh, this part from Rock Auto is the exact same part. OEM as what came out of the car um, there's a little name stamped on it it's the same exact name on the body so I assume that uh, that's that's good obviously it wasn't uh, wasn't the cheapest one but it wasn't the most expensive one either so no uh, no torque spec called out or anything like that you do have an oil seal in there so you know um, but this is a, this is aluminum it appears to be so I don't want to tighten it too much and uh, strip out the aluminum that'd be unfortunate because it is an oil passage here so if you screw this up you're uh, you're in big trouble use an extra long extension here to get this one in the back so I can get to it sorry if the uh, Camera angle is not the greatest. It's behind all sorts of stuff anyway. All right, so we'll just snug it up. All right, that's really about it. Put this wiring harness back on. Don't forget you got the little uh, like positioning clip or whatever you want to call that in there. Snake that back in. Again, 10 minute 10 millimeter bolts for all of this. Alright, that's snug. So now we're in mechanically. Plug the wires back in. They are keyed, so they will only go in one way. And a little pop with that one clipping in. And a little pop with that one clipping in. All right, I'll show you real quick the name. Uh, let me get my camera not make me sick right there. You can see the name etched in. It says... Kihin, K-E-I-H-I-N, obviously uh, Japanese, I would assume. Um, and again, it says the same thing on the other one, looks identical in, in construction, so again, that's good. Um, so that's it. So another recommendation that I've seen, uh, though this manual doesn't specifically call it out, is to change the oil when you do this because it is an oil-bearing part um, to keep it fresh. I did change the oil in the car uh, just before this. So I need to put oil in it. That'd be bad to not put oil in it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put oil in the car. And then uh, we'll start it up and check for uh, check engine warning lights. Hopefully there's none of those. Uh, again, I, be I do believe this is the oil sender. So it'll, I'm sure it'll spit a lot of codes if something doesn't go well. And again, don't forget to reconnect your battery um, prior to start. But we'll come back for uh, initial start and see what we get. Alright, so if you notice, 
the red oil light down there. That's what I'm looking for to go off. And the check engine light is on right now because um, I haven't started the car yet. And my little maintenance minder wrench is on, so I'll reset that also. Um, so it'll take, you know, a good three or four count for that oil light to go out, maybe a little bit quicker than that. All right, so the oil light is out. No, uh, no checks or anything like that. The clock is blinking, so that's okay. All right, so if you don't know how to set, reset the oil life, press it and hold it. Eventually, I think it starts blinking. Yep, let it go. Press it and hold it again. And it resets back to 100. And there we go. So 80,000 miles on the car, give or take, you can see that. And uh, that's what I did. So um, we'll see how it goes. I don't know if it's gonna work, obviously. Like I said, I probably have to wait to either a cold, cold snap or this winter, but it's definitely a simple job with a uh, only a 10 millimeter socket was all it took. So I'll check the engine oil level and uh, that'll be it. Thanks for watching.